Welcome to another episode of the Film Room with KJ300. And it's the first film room of the year that the Saints lost. We went two weeks, 2-0. Two and oh. We was happy, we were cool. But I said in the last one, we probably are not going to score 44, 47 points per game. Even though we got Clint Kubiak, it's going to get to a point where we got to make adjustments. And Sunday was the day of adjustments. We lost to the Eagles 15-12. to 12. It's two sides to how Saints fans are acting right now. I'm on the side of, okay, we lost the game. Let's figure it out. You know, the offensive line was almost terrible. We're going to see that. I felt like we should have threw the ball to Alave more, put Alvin Kamara on the outside more. Defensive-wise, we gave up big plays. Dallas Goddard had an amazing game. I think the two players of the game is Dallas Goddard and Jalen Carter with honorable mention being Saquon Barkley because in the second half he went off. But it's another side of, well, Clint Kubiak, maybe he, he Pete Carmichael, he just showed us this, or a fire Dennis Allen, Derek Carr ain't it. We back to the old side. I'm not on that side. And I told y'all I was going to be brutally honest this year, brutally honest. And right now I'm I'm mad we lost because of how we lost. Now, I'm not mad because we lost the game because I feel like we were going to lose. It might not be the last time we lose this year. But what I saw from the offensive line, especially Trevor Penning on, on this film, and y'all going to see it was terrible. We could not run the football. I know Eric McCoy being out, and it, it was just confirmed that he's going to be out at least six to eight weeks, so we got to figure it out anyway. I know he was out. I know Taysom Hill won them, and it affected us. It did, but it's the next man up. They didn't have A.J. Brown. They didn't have Devontae Smith for a good part of the game, and they won the game, so it don't matter about somebody not being there. Of course, Eric McCoy is the leader of the team. We just got to figure it out at the end of the day. Find something else that's going to work or that's, that we can do to combat the fact that Jalen Carter ran slap through us at almost every play. The five down linemen got a push on every run play, basically. And we had no time for Derek Carter to throw the damn football. And then the times he had a little bit of time, he at the very end, he had to chunk it up in the air like the Shahid uh, play that we're going to see. But I'm not on the side of, of, of getting mad and talking about Clint Kubiak. Of course, he got to fix names. But we two on one. We, we're the first in the division right now, so we cool. Of course, I didn't want us to give up the big play to Dallas Goddard like we did a George Kittle a couple years ago. I remember that. We always give up a big play playing man-to-man, and somebody find a way to get down the field on that left side for 50, 60 damn yards. Of course, we didn't want that to happen. But I'm not on the side with everybody with Clint Kubiak and all that. We 2-1-1. and one. Most Saints fans didn't believe we were going to win the second game or the third game. They expect us to be 1-2 or two right now. But we 2-1-1. and one. So let's get into the um, the film. It is bad. It is bad. That, that's just my warning, y'all. It's bad. I said when I was watching the film, we got dominated at the offensive line. And I'm going to do a couple plays from the beginning of the game because Eric McCoy was out there, and it still showed signs of about what was going to happen during this game. Trevor Pennant, I told y'all I'm going to be very honest. He did amazing. The first two games, I had no complaints. But I also said this game was going to be a test for him too. He got tested this, this week, and I'm going to show y'all the film. He right here, number 70. He fell at the beginning. He he false started, even though they didn't call it. He fell, and then the person he supposed to climb up to, I guess, is Dean, and Dean made the tackle. We could not get a run game going, and it was, it was because of the whole offensive line. But look at Trevor Penn and fall, and then Dean is right there. And this happened on a lot of plays. We couldn't – and you know how the offense ran. We got to have a run game for us to even try to get somewhere because we don't want Derek Carr just dropping back and throwing the ball. We want to make it as easy as possible. Trevor Penn and fall, and then Dean is right there. We're going to see a lot of these plays, and and it they they can do better. They can definitely do better. But right now, I said during the week, our run game got to be there, and we got to stop the run. We were stopping the run until the second half, but they stopped our run basically the whole game. Still from the first drive, now Eric McCoy is out. You can see he's gone. And Chris Olave right here is going to be open on this route going up here. We don't have the time for Derek Carr to see that. Watch Cesar Ruiz right here. Jalen Carter. This is Jalen Carter. Watch how he shift over and go. Hey, look. This is basically the whole. I can show film. I can make a 50-minute video right now just watching the lineman. Jalen Carter had his best. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is his best game of his career so far. His, his short career. He just got in the league. But watch him shift over, and it's one, two, three, four people right there. And we could not get a body on. 
Look how quick he did it. No time. And we know how our offense is ran. It, it, it's a timing thing. It's rhythm. We had no rhythm or time because you can't run the ball. They're not worried about you running the ball because they, they stopping it. And then we ain't getting time for Derek Carr to throw the ball. This was kind of noticed during the game. And I saw people telling me in the live, like, Alave, Alave. And when I watched the film, I'm like, damn, the one outlier is Chris Alave. Whether it's through the middle, like, he, he beating people, forced the ball to him. Especially when we we're going to drives, we got uh, a punt uh, blocked, we got a you know an interception, a fumble. Feed Alave because he winning right now. He's winning. He at the top of the string right here. He winning. And every time I watch him catch, I said he's winning. We got a little with a little time. Chris Alave is winning every single time. I felt like we should have forced him the ball at some point because you got Taysom Hill gone, Jawan Johnson, Foster Monroe. They ain't doing a damn thing this whole game. Um, and the one outlier, Shahid had zero fantasy points. I mean, complete zero. Chris Olave was having himself a game, and I felt like now, watching the film, that's what we should have got the ball to most of the time because we couldn't run the ball and just find somebody that can beat the zone or the man, and Chris Olave was doing it. Very next play. Look at Trevor Penning right here. Look at Trevor Penning. Just watch him. Watch him. Do y'all see how quick that play was? It, it, it wasn't it, it wasn't a play. Because quickly off the line, Trevor Penn gets beat. And guess who made the tackle? Both of these guys right here. The fam ain't going to lie to you. It, it, it won't. And like I said, it, it ain't all on him. It's not all on him. But I see him a lot in this damn film of people beat him. You know what I'm saying? It said Fuaga. That's why, that's why we'll get nothing in the run game. Nothing. And when we did, it was cool. And then the next time we ran the ball, nothing. Like I said, it's not, it's not just on Trevor Penning. But it's a lot of Trevor Penning that I'm seeing. Missing. And then you want to go have a flag at the end of the game. Want to run somebody to the – want to run a small DB into the damn bench and get a flag. But you ain't doing that to none of – you ain't doing it to Jalen Carter. I ain't see you do it to Jalen Carter. I'm doing these plays back-to-back. -back. This this the first drive. Just just so y'all won't think that oh, he's all on Trevor Penning because he had a bad game. No, I'm not. I'm going to talk about a lot of offense linemen in this film room. But here we go again. Trevor Penning gets manhandled at the beginning of the damn play. Right off the line. He's right here, number 70. Just watch him. Once again, soon as the ball is snapped, he's getting pushed back. Alvin Kamara got a retreat back. And look at Trevor Penning. At least he shakes his head like, damn, that's on me. That's my fault. At least he did that. But watch him. Number 93 on him. And as soon as the ball snap, he's getting pushed all the way back. Foster Monroe didn't block either. Very next play. Caesar Ruiz right here. Just, just watch Caesar Ruiz. They didn't even got to have five down linemen. And that's why it was so bad uh, Sunday. Now, am I losing faith? No, I'm not. But just watch Jay LaCarta. This is his game. Right on Caesar Ruiz. Look at him. I'm talking about dominating. A dominant performance. That's what you call just being a man against a man and just beating him every time. Look at Jay Carter. This it's four people. He go right past them. That's why I say Sunday show that we need to figure something out. Because if Eric McCoy not being there, this, this was gonna happen. Because Derek Carr was protected the first two weeks, but you played against a team that's aggressive. That that ain't they call the Cowboys quote unquote soft. The Eagles ain't soft. Even though the stats show that they give up all these points and all this, they locked in. They locked in, and Jalen Carter had his best game, and he was – Cesar Ruiz, one of our best players on the offensive line. Trevor Penning is getting worked, and this happens all throughout the game. Look at these two guys right here, man. Let's watch these two guys right here. I'm talking about as soon as you drop back, I'm gonna count. One, two, and it's not and it the whole game. It's the whole game. We there's nothing you can do possibly running the ball or passing the football if they gonna get back there that easy. That was not a problem in the first two weeks. It wasn't. And I hope it don't be a problem going forward. Eric McCoy is a big key to that. Taysom Hill being back there to where you gotta worry about somebody else is a big key to that. But if players not gonna be there, and 
Dave is just going to run right past you. It's going to happen a lot. It's other pass rushers. We got Chris Jones coming up soon. Is, is that going to happen against the Chiefs too on national TV? The one person that beat us bad was Dallas Goddard. He's right there. And we play a lot of this man, uh, and this is more of a zone. And I just don't know how he just got – to this very moment, I don't understand how he just kept getting open. He uh, that route he did on Tyron Matthew right here. Why Tyron Matthew was amazing safety. You know exactly what you got, Tyron Matthew. Look at him at the top of this route. How he made him turn all the way around. That's how you lose. That's how you lose on a route. That was his first big play. We gave up. The defense played amazing. I'm gonna get them this. They played good for a good majority of the game, and they they played good enough. They got turnovers. We won a turnover battle and all that. And we couldn't score the ball. And I'm not mad at them. It's just the big plays we was giving up. If we didn't give up big plays, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say nothing about this defense. They could have scored a touchdown on a long drive because we've been out there for so long. But the big plays we gave up just hurt. Now, they didn't score off this because Nick Seriano, I don't know what his problem was. They had three, four field goals they could have took, but he was going for it. I don't know what his problem was. But the big plays we were giving up was insane. Tyron Matthew will mess up, but it – He'll always make up for it. That's why I always give him credit. He always make up for it. Now on this play, they said on the uh the commentator said this play is used for somebody that's bigger, maybe a Dallas Goddard or AJ Brown right here, because this Devontae Smith is throwing the ball to. And maybe Devontae Smith didn't know how to run the route or uh, like try to get in more instead of just wrapping around it and just getting in. Um Tyron Matthew made an amazing pick. Amazing pick. This is the same drive where he gave us that big play. He ended it with what? A pick. And the defense was giving us the bend but don't break mentality. That's what they were giving us. But it had got to a point where when we uh, blocked that punt, I said, damn, go score it because the offense is not going to put no damn points on the board. This was an amazing play. We we got a fumble recovery. We got a pick. We got a block punt and got zero points out of every last one of those turnovers that we got. And then we had a fourth down stop, no points. So shout out to Tyron Matthew. He, he made plays where he'll mess up. And every uh, player do that, but he got next play mentality, and that's exactly what he had. I'm going to show it from this angle because I should I should name this the Jalen Carter fan room. That's what I should name it. Look at Jalen Carter right here, and look at Cesar Ruiz. It's the truth. This is the honest truth. He had his – look at him. I don't know what got in him. I don't know what, his, what, his, what somebody said to him. I don't know what it was, but Sunday – he, if he played like this every single game, what? who knows what type of career he going to have? Because there is no way on earth he's just beating people like that, bro. And that's who they that's who they thought they was getting when they drafted him. And that's exactly what he, I hate it had to be against the Saints. But Cesar Reeves got killed. Most of the, everybody that he was on got killed. He disrupted almost all the players that were negative. He was there, right there. That's what he supposed to do at his position. Once again, we, we can see it again. Now, I said it was tough to watch. Because Jalen Carter is literally the player of the game. No time for nothing. I'm going to say this. We don't usually have a pass rush. But when we do, good things happen for us. We don't usually have one. But when we do, good things. Carl Granderson. You know, you get Brian Brzee back there sometimes. We ain't heard a lot from Chase Young. We haven't. Um, But I would love a more consistent pass rush. But when we get one, we usually get a, a big sack. A big fumble, something. We 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 make the best of our opportunities when we get back there. My problem is we don't get back there a lot. So that was this was an amazing play um, from Carl Grandison, and I love Carl Grandison. How how he became the player he is, the money he got off you know career not looking like it's just gonna be amazing. And he he had an impact season last year. I'm wishing that we get a lot more. Pick. Cameron Jordan didn't even play a lot of snaps this game. We have to get a pass rush. Good things happen for us when we get a pass rush. We turn, we make them turn the ball over, things like that. The only bad thing about this is we don't put no points on the board. I'm showing this play from one angle. And you can guess who I'm going to talk about. Jalen damn Carter. He is right here on Cesar Ruiz and our center right here, back up center, Lucas. I want you to see. Just look at him. His burst off the ball being that size. We not even putting that. We putting one hand on him. Snap. Someone snap come. Watch this. Gone. 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 
He disrupt the whole play. That's exactly what I'm saying. I told y'all at the beginning. He is disrupting every play that is bad. I see Jalen Carter, whether it's Reeves, Trevor Penn. I said, I'm just not picking on Trevor Penn in this, this uh, film room. He doing it to everybody. This is the Shahid play that I feel like Shahid should have still caught this ball. But while I was watching the game, I wasn't, I, I guess I didn't see the offensive line, but we did not have time for this develop to develop. That's why we didn't have big plays because we didn't have time. Watch 97, I mean, is that 97 or 91? He got right through there, and I feel like if Derek Carr had half of a more second, one more second, we could have probably, because he was gone. Uh, Shahid ran a great route. He was gone in the end zone. But I feel like the pressure made him just really just lunch it like that. And I felt like he should have caught the ball, but I also feel like, damn, if we get another second, with that's a touchdown, and that probably would have changed the game. But I still thought he should have caught that. Uh, ending with zero fantasy points is crazy, Shahid. If he, you went two weeks getting these bomb touchdowns, and then out of nowhere, when they start you, you got zero points. We did a great job on that run defense the first half. Now, we could put some of the blame on the offense for not scoring the ball to where they could the run couldn't be effective. But when you're 3-0 still, you got everything at your disposal. So the defense been on the field multiple times. They done got you two turnovers. We got three points. Now Saquon Barkley just leaning on you, leaning on you. I knew this. Was, I knew that big play was going to come because of how we missed tackles and how, how he was just getting 15 yards here, 20. Look, look, at, look at the effort he had. That's straight effort. And I'm like, damn, if we don't score a touchdown or make them start throwing that damn ball, our defense is going to look at us and be like, uh, we, we we can't do it no more. Saquon Barkley coming. And that's exactly what they did in the second half. 15 yards here, 10 yards here, 8 yards here. We couldn't do that. 3-0 and allowing them the fact that they can run the ball. It, the defense been out there all day. You, you, you you're going three and out. You, you ain't. They give you turnovers. You ain't getting. I knew Saquon Barkley was going to do that big run. I could have did multiple plays to where it led up to this big run, but I did a play already right before this. And, and if you watch the game, you know it was going to come at some point. This right here was beautifully blocked. Beautifully. We got DeMario Davis. Not, he, he, he can't even see what's going on. That's how much all this is going on. You got Pete that went to the outside. And that opened up a straight lane. Look at Dickerson with his great block. DeMario Davis, when he finally see it, Saquon Barkley is too damn fast. He just run past everybody. Marshawn Lattimore, Alante Taylor, top end speed. It, it was going to come at some point. You can't hold him that long with them being able to run the ball the way they can with Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley. And it's three damn zero. So, yeah, I'm mad at the defense for giving up the big play. But, Damn. More than three points at this point of the game would help a lot. People was in the comments saying this as well with AK being that receiver. Um, I agree, but I also, I'm sitting here like, we can't even, we can't block people one-on-one. -on -one. We need somebody back there to help, or maybe we need to put a full back in or something. Maybe we, we should have changed some up to where somebody back there, AK could be at receiver. But we don't get time. I, we actually got a little bit of time on this play to where AK can motion in, we see, that Zach Bunn is on him, and I think we should have attacked it. But Derek Carr threw the ball uh, pretty quickly, and AK just made a great catch. Like they was gonna get back there. You you, you see them you see them infiltrating our, our offensive line. They they coming. They blocked good enough, and that happened. Yes, we could have kept uh, doing it or finding a way to do it. But the fact that they was getting back there, they'll have three men three men up there, four men, and they get back there every time. We won't have time. Just like with Chris Olave, just with Shahid. We need to have time for big plays for Shahid. Clean pocket. We did not have a clean pocket the whole game. So, yeah, AK probably on some uh, choice routes, you know, things like that to soften up the defense so we can get them tired. I felt like we should have kept. We could have did a quick game to what, damn, make these big boys tired and find a way to just drop back and throw the ball. But it, we we got a lot to say after the game. You know, so it just, it's up to Clint Kubiak and Dennis Allen, Derek Carr, to figure out a way to fix that because teams going to start doing – they might not have the personnel that the Eagles got, but teams that got good defensive linemen, they're going to do the same thing to us. 
Tyron Matthew is guarding Dallas Goddard. Um, and they did a lot of these plays because we playing man to man to where people are running through people. People are running, you know, to clear somebody out, and it's not a pass interference. Look like a route, but they was getting underneath, and we had to tackle. Dallas Goddard, this game, like I said, amazing football game. But the fact that he kept getting the ball, and at the end of the game, we want to double team and run into each other. We just kept giving up chunk plays. Yeah, I, don't, I think Devontae Smith is out of the game at this point. A chunk play we can't tackle. They get all the way up that damn field. And I, I, I get it, Harris. I'd be mad, too. I'd be mad, too. But that's what Dennis Allen defense is amazing. Everybody got weak points at, on offense and defense because you do something so good. But – we have to be able to tackle. We're going to play man-to-man and let, you know, somebody like Tyron Matthew guard Dallas Goddard because he can catch the ball and break a tackle on Tyron Matthew. He ain't he ain't the biggest guy in the world. So he got to find a different – if he don't get the right angle or the right position to tackle somebody, it's not going to work. And I guess Harris is running with him. I guess we're trying to double-team him. I guess so. But that Tyron Matthew got to tackle. You got to tackle. In hindsight, we should have did more of this. I mean, just just go down with the offensive line not being able to block, I guess, because th- this was the only way. We had a very good clean pocket right here. Chris Olave, you got Alvin Kamara moving out. You got to worry about him. People shifting over. The linebacker shifting over. Now you got one linebacker in the middle, and guess what you do? Throw it right over his head to Chris Olave. I wish we would have did that. Just looking at it now, because Chris Olave at the end of the day was the one person that was finding a way to get open on this defense. Shahid wasn't getting open. Foster Monroe and Jawan Johnson went doing a damn thing. Nothing. Alvin Kamara got to be back there to block. Um, so Chris Lava was the only one one person that was getting open. We should have found ways to get him the ball. Just like this play right here. Just live and die with your offensive line being trash. I, I don't want Derek Carr to get hurt or nothing like that, but we got to find a way. And on this drive, we found a way with who? Chris Olave. This was a storybook ending. You got Chris Olave going against our former player, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, who talked a lot of trash. He talked a lot of trash on here with us. So it is what it is. You got Zach Bunn, who played on our team. And this is like a cover zero. The safeties are all the way down. So basically, they playing man-to-man across the board, hoping that somebody get back there. And Chris Olave won so damn fast. The perfect matchup. And who do we use to get, get down there? Chris Olave. And I'm just thinking when I recorded the video, I said, damn, this is the storybook ending. We scored a touchdown. All we got to do is stop them. But little did I know, and I said it on live, don't do this to me, to the, uh, don't do this to me, Saints. Don't, don't, don't hurt my heart again the way that y'all always have on that one big play. And guess what we give up right after this? A third and 16 Dallas Goddard, 50 to 60 down yards, running into each other. This is what hurt. Like I said, losing, okay, we lost the game. But it's how you lose. It's certain games where you be like, bro, we don't even get us to this point if that's how you're going to do me. This is third and 16 to win. You got one more play, and then you won a game. It's going to be fourth and 16. But sometimes I don't understand why we be going man-to-man when we in situations like this. The only question mark I have about Dennis Allen is doing a two-minute drill and, and last drives where you know they got to pass the ball. Just, you know, try to keep everything in front of you. Don't risk doing a man-to-man, especially when Dallas Goddard has been killing you. Of course, you want a double team, but they feel like you're going to run man-to-man. So they're going to they gonna do man-beaters where you, you, people can run into each other. And it was ran perfectly. I, I guess we didn't have our eyes open, whatever it was. He killed them off the line, and then one, two, three people collided with each other, and this man is gone. Damn, they're 50, 60, whatever the hell many yards that was. And it's just like, wow, bro. I said, don't do this to me. On live, on this play right here, right before the play, I said, don't do this to me. Saints, don't do this to me. I know how it is. I, I remember being in that dome when George Kittle caught that ball. And we got the face mask on, on this same side of the field, going to the left side. Look at this. Perfect. Perfect execution by the damn Eagles. I ain't, I, I ain't got too much to say about them. But for us, running into each other on this big play right here, that is some Saints stuff for you. That 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 is what kill a a, a game, a, a Saints fan heart because we see it all the time, and it literally happened. I said, "Don't do this to me," and that's exactly what they did. Derek Carr just trying to make a play, 
You need to get down there field goal range. Um, they get back there, of course. We got two people blocking somebody. They get back there. And he threw a ball that he shouldn't have thrown. Maybe throw the ball away or something. He said he was hoping that uh, Shahid, like, come back, whatever. But it's, it's three people right there, man. And you got Chris Olave coming over there. It was just a bad throw. Bad throw, you know, bad protection in a situation where I don't even think we have timeouts no more. Um, and that's how you end the game. That's how. You, that's why I say the loss, me, uh, uh, the team losing ain't a problem. That how we lose be the problem. We should be three and zero right now, especially with all the turnovers we got. The the fact that we got a touchdown at the end of the game, I don't know why we couldn't get no touchdown before that. But we got the touchdown, and then it's time to get a stop. We give we give up the big play, the very big play. Then let them score a touchdown, and then throw a pick. Now you two and one. Got the Falcons this week coming up, man.